I heard the news. I was starting to get these texts come in from friends, and it just said a few words at Tucker Carlson. I thought, okay. Maybe it was the 60 Minutes episode that they're talking about. And I started to write back, oh, yeah, I saw the Epps thing. This is terrible. I was there while we were doing this kind of coverage. And they said, no, he's fired. And it was literally, well, are you sure? Because obviously, you know, I'm at the center of a lot of this. And it felt surreal. And there were a lot of mixed emotions that went through my head. There were feelings at first like, yes. And then also the reality that you don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. But at the same time, Tucker and his executive producer, Justin Wells, who was also fired, really were responsible for breaking me and making my life a living hell. So there is a feeling of justice, but it's only partial. Why did you go work for him? I was working with Maria Bartiromo at the time. I knew as a female that I would never get the executive producer title there working on that show. The opportunity came up to go to Tucker and it was a promotion. I would be overseeing a team. I would also be overseeing three different platforms. And I liked the, ta the staff, honestly, when I interviewed with them. And I was hoping that it would be more professional and what he was portraying on air was just a show. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So when do you realize that? Immediately. I show up first day of work, and I know that this is a popular one. It's been widely publicized. There are literally pictures like this big of Nancy Pelosi in a bathing suit in Europe, plastered all over. Um, there was even one on my computer screen for the temporary computer I had to use, and I had to take it down just to work. Um, Within a few days, I was called into Justin Wells' office with Alex McCaskill, who was a senior producer as well, and asked if Maria was having an affair with Kevin McCarthy. It was just, I was shocked. I couldn't even believe it. I was floored. Let's go through some of what you allege in, in your lawsuit. It is this culture of misogyny. How did that manifest in a more personal way? I'm tough. I have a thick skin, obviously, <laughs> having been through all I've been through in the last month. But it's hard to take day in and day out, which is a big part of why I'm speaking out now to let people know that it's not OK. And the impact of bullying when it's done day after day after day. And very quickly, I spoke out. For example, early on, they had Andrew Tate on the show and I raised my hand and I said, we have to be very mindful that this is two white males together. And I use the example of Gail King and R. Kelly saying that she could go in a different direction with that interview that I felt Tucker couldn't. And they weren't happy about that because they wanted to be a bro fest. They were all laughing about how fun it would be to go to Romania and hang out with him. They liked his messaging. So whenever I said something like that, it put a target on my back and gradually I was shut out of meetings. I was mocked. I was eventually demoted. That's how it played out for me. And it got worse and it got worse and it got worse every time I spoke out. What was your experience with anti-Semitism? It, it's interesting because I've never experienced it in my life until now. It was nothing I ever really thought of. And it started sort of around the holiday period that we I had a colleague who was Israeli, and they do this thing with HR where you become this global ambassador for Fox for the show, and you get $10,000, essentially, to represent the program as a diversity ambassador, and the whole staff was white. So they recommended that he be that person because Israelis and Jews are minorities. And they first suggested it in a meeting, and then they brought it to him. Uh, I think he was shocked. And they said he could use that money to buy pizza for the whole staff for a year. Now, I know HR claims they did an investigation and they said that some of these things were said, but the feelings about it in the office were different than me. It was said, but they weren't offended. What is it about the culture at Tucker, because listen, as someone who covers him and as cover, covers him as a force that threatened democracy until Friday night, um, it falls in this category of shocking, not surprising. What was for you, as someone inside Fox, shocking about the culture at Tucker coming from Maria's show? 
It was very out in the open. What you see is what ends up on air. People are believers who are there. I was really... I found it difficult to cover the kind of stories that they wanted me to cover. I wasn't expecting it. Maybe I should have. That's what some people say. But, for example, um, right toward the end of my time there, when the January 6th tapes were coming out, Tucker was very set on finding an FBI person who was implanted in the crowd and spinning this conspiracy that they were ultimately the ones responsible for the Capitol attack, not Fox News, as they're about to go into the Dominion trial, that it was really, you know, the FBI that set up this thing, not Fox telling the American people that the election was rigged and the voting machines did it. And when I went back to them and said, look, there's no conspiracy theory here. I called this attorney that's representing one of the Proud Boys, and he flat out told me on two occasions, there is no conspiracy. Get away from this stuff. This is dangerous. Tell Tucker to stop. I'll come on your show and represent my client, but I absolutely will walk off if he asks me this. And the response was, well, find somebody else. Tucker is really intent on this. And that wore my mental health, too, because by that time, I had really begun to connect the dots that the programming that we were putting on the air every night was not just generating business, but also generating hatred in the audience. And after January 6th, I had this wake up moment that this is hurting people. People are getting angry and people are acting out on that anger. And this is not OK. And I don't want to be part of that. I guess some people who have kept an eye on what he's done would say that you might have known that before, right? You go to work for Tucker in 2022? Yes, in summer. So, so what is it about, I mean, do you, do you feel like, and I want to ask you about the tapes. I mean, did he ask you guys to look through the tapes looking for Mr. Epps? Is that what you're suggesting? Or other FBI informants? I was not part of the team that looked through the tapes. I, prior, my story is long, but um, I had been on an emergency medical leave due to the abuse that took place on that show. So when I came back, they knew I had legal representation, so was not including me in the viewing of the tapes. But they were having me just look for a lawyer of a Proud Boy that was willing to say that there were FBI informants infiltrating the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. And none of them were. Not that I could find, no. I want to go back to what causes some of your stress, I think. It is around your Dominion deposition. Can you take us through those events? So following the 2020 election, people started reaching out in early 2021 for informal meetings about our workflow. Um, that went on for about a year. In early 2022, we had a meeting where they said that we're going to want to take both of your phones and take an image of them, which is scary. Uh, they made me hold them up, show that it was forever, that I was saving all my texts. They said, you're only going to need them from October through March. I said, I have personal stuff on personal phone. Oh, don't worry. We don't want any of that. Um, but it was still, remember, I was like sick that day that they took the phones. I also said to them at that point, I have this old company phone. I used it through the whole period, a screen smashed. Got rid of it in April 2021. Do you want that? Nah, I'm just keep it for safekeeping. So I turned over my devices in March. Uh, in June, I had a second meeting where I was summoned to Fox, and they kind of scrolled through my phones and asked if I had a Signal app, which I deleted simply because Marie and I used it for about a week. Didn't really take. Got rid of it. I'm a little type A. Obviously, I keep the things very organized. If I don't want it, I get rid of it. And I said to them, this seems really serious. Where is this going? What are you going to need from me? Oh, you might be deposed, but it's going to be no big deal. Fox is going to win this slam dunk. July, I find out I'm going to be deposed. Scared to death, <laughs> obviously. Um, walk in there in August. I believe the date was August 10th for my first session with Winston Strawn and the Fox attorneys. First thing I say when I walk in, Marie at this point, um, going back, has told me that she's hired her own representation who has copies of all of our text messages and emails. So the first thing I say out of the gate is, Maria has her own attorney. Do I need one? No, 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 no. It's just, they complicate things. You know, Steve Ducey had one, he was in a few days ago, and they feel like they need to earn their keep, so they just ask questions to um, make money. It just complicates the process. No. Can I take notes? No. 
<laughs> so I'm given this, no need, no need, no big deal. And they tell, give me the speech about how um, it's a slam dunk First Amendment case. The whole thing is so stupid. Um, I say, am I in trouble? No. Uh, get this big binder about that big black with all of these exhibits of text messages, my LinkedIn page. I mean, it looks quite serious mm -hmm. to me. And we start going through it and they start coaching me. Now, when I'm in there, I decide this is an opportunity to talk about some of the chauvinism and problems I've been having on Sunday morning futures. Let me get it on the record with the Fox attorneys. I think that's important because I didn't want to go to HR and trust them, to be honest. So this is a way of me setting a record with Fox. So I start telling them these things very, very early on. And it seemed like they had a plan and I screwed it up. It's not what they wanted to what hear. What was their plan? They wanted, they were expecting me to, I think, be, they flat out said, we expected you to be best friends with Maria. And we were very close. But by that point, we were disagreeing on the integrity of the election um, and what had taken place in 2022 and some other theories that she had. And there was definitely tension. Um, and there are records of that. And there are records of all of that. Uh, I had been asked to spy on her by the Fox bosses and report back on what she was doing, which caused a lot of stress. And that was part of the reason I went to Tucker as well. I just physically and emotionally couldn't take it. And when I go back and listen to some of those tapes now that I have, I hear the stress in my voice and how depleted I was. And so you spied on Maria for your Fox bosses? Yes. Um, I not spied. I would tell them what she was doing. If there were things that concerned me, spy is the wrong word, that I had handled in the past myself because we had a good relationship and can work it mm -hmm. out together. I reported those things because I became very paranoid about my job because I had been shaken down by multiple executives at the company.